Welcome everyone to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra broadcasting live from Los Angeles. And the topic of today is how to be centered in the midst of all the chaos, the apparent chaos that is happening in the world, how you can really not be affected by it what can you do to stay in a center of yourself in this uh, what seemingly uh, these times that things are up and down all the time and things changing very rapidly there's a lot of confusion um, and uh, fear worry anxiety in the face of uh, this uncertain times so we're going to get into that and I'm going to share things with you. I will share with you my own experiences and I will help you and uh, give you some tools how you can deal with it. Um, for the moment, just give me one moment. My Instagram didn't go through. I need to get this one going. I don't know what I did. Maybe I messed it up. Okay, I think I took a picture. Oh yeah, I took a picture instead. All right. So live, let's get this going. <clears throat> All right, so back into meditation. Let's, we're going to do one of our simple meditations that we normally do because um, I have a lot of you contacting me, asking me, um, you have a busy mind, a lot is going on. There is different kind of meditations you can do. There is active meditation that you can do that quiets your mind, uh, whether you're sitting and, and you're using the active meditation or you're standing up and you're jumping up and down and you're using your body. Um, you can also go, f go the physical exercises. If you do it correctly, it could be used as meditation and quiets your mind. For myself, I partake in different kind of meditations, but um, the easiest way is always very the simple way, the direct way into silence. And a lot of people that I've encountered, because I sometimes I have to apologize, seem like I forget. Uh, I forget that for so many people, how difficult it is to go beyond the mind. And we talk about quieting the mind. And, and again, I take responsibility, I apologize, because I forget this, that I've struggled with it for a long time, and I forget the language. You can't really quiet your mind, you can't shut it down. It's an impossible task, because the mind is like a dog and if you have a dog, your dog is going to bark every once in a while. Some dogs bark a lot and some don't, but it's their nature to bark. You can't own a dog and expect your dog not to bark. So same thing. You can't have a mind and expect it to be quiet because it's impossible. So let's clear one thing. You can't quiet your mind, all right? So let's get that straight. No one can do it. You can, maybe for a short period of time, but it rebels and comes back twice, three times, ten times as strong. So when I talk about quieting your mind, I'm not talking about repressing it. I'm talking about going beyond your mind turning around it, okay? So by turning around it, what I mean is 
looking for this place before the mind arises, before thoughts arises. There is a place behind these thoughts. Okay, I, I'm just going to say this again. Just, just listen to me and hear me what I'm saying. Okay, so it's just not floating to your head very quickly. So it's not just some words. I would like you to pay attention. This is very important. This is going to help you. If you get this, it will be a major game changer in your life. Okay? So, you can't repress your mind from thinking. It won't work. You may be doing it for a short period of time. Maybe you've learned different techniques. Maybe you are uh, chanting uh, a word. Uh, maybe you're concentrating your, your breathing or whatever techniques that you're using that quiets the mind, but it's short term. And then it comes back. In order to, but, but behind the mind, before these thoughts arise, there's a space, there's a place which is absolutely silent. It's very quiet. So my purpose is to help you recognize this place. Recognition of a place which is already here. It's already there. You don't need to do anything for it. You don't need to do anything for something which is already inside you. You don't have to gain it and you won't lose it. It's there. All you have to do is recognize it. And through the recognition of this place, your attention will go there. As your attention goes in that direction, automatically your mind becomes quiet. It's almost instant. It's natural. We're going to get into this. I'll give you some explanations. But for the moment, let's just do this. Bring your attention inwards. Follow the stream of your thoughts. It's like you're following the trail of the thoughts. And look inwards. Where do they originate? Where is this place? that manufacture thoughts. Where is the factory of it? So you turn your attention inwards and you follow the trail. And like a detector, detective, like a detective which is looking to see where things started it. And as you follow the trail towards the source of your thoughts, you arrive at a place which is there is nothing. It's like a huge pond or a lake that the thoughts appear on top of the lake, but as you dive inside the lake, there is nothing. It's quiet. So if you follow this, and if, if you get it correctly, you can almost instantly at any moment anywhere reach this place and almost instantly at any time your mind becomes quiet without any effort effortless very simple it's just one moment of shifting your attention to this place and boom you are quiet so Turn your attention inwards. Now, what I'm saying is also I want to explain this part of it. This is not a feeling, okay? It's not a feeling that, oh, I feel good or I feel bad, okay? So if you arrive at a place that it's kind of a, oh, I feel good, but then you can feel bad too. No, this is a place which is still, it's always there, it doesn't come and it doesn't go, it's always here, okay? So let's do that.
turn your attention from the world outside. Turn your attention from what you're thinking. Okay? Whatever thoughts going through your mind, take don't try to stop your mind. Just take your attention off of it and bring your attention inwards. Just start to journey inside yourself as if you're sitting on a train and on a car and this car on this rail is going deep inside yourself. It's traveling deep in your inner silence. So you're not focused on what you feel. You're not focused on your body sensations. You're not focused on your thoughts. You're not trying to stop your thoughts. You're simply diving inward and going to the source of everything. And as you're doing this, you at the end of the trail, you enter into this place that is nothing. It's quiet. Don't get afraid of the word nothingness. Don't be afraid of the word emptiness. Okay, these are just words. This place is very calm, very quiet. And this is the place that the Atma, that they say in Hinduism, in Sanskrit, where God lives, or the witness, or the observer, or the seed of the soul, your higher self, resides. The one who is always here. And you will see for yourself that this place, when you arrive there, it's quiet and it's blissful. So let's go ahead and turn our attention very gently. Don't beat yourself up. If you can do it, it's okay. Just turn your attention inwards and dive within yourself to this place, which is silence, silent. Take a nice deep breath and relax into this place.
Just hang in there. Relax. All is well. Leave the creation in the hands of the Creator. Let the one who has created all of this take care of it. You don't need to worry about this. You only have one job to do in this life, and that is to recognize and realize the truth of who you are. Just hang in there with yourself. Even if thoughts arise, it's okay. Don't get into a struggle. Meditation is not something that you force it. Meditation is something that happens naturally. It's a natural occurrence.
Let us just come to you. Hang out in this moment. Don't get engaged with distractions, your phone, your pets, whatever that you're used to distracting yourself with or getting engaged with, and your mind. You just hang out in this moment. without trying to do anything, even not even trying to do meditation. Even put that idea away and just learn to hang out in this moment without an agenda here, right now, quietly spending time with yourself your divine self, your holiness. And let meditation come to you. A forced meditation has no value. We are trying to unlearn and undo a condition that's been forced on us to return back into our natural state. I have no idea that where that came from, but Things happen. Yeah, just hang in there. Welcome what wants to come and welcome what wants to leave. Develop that attitude without trying to hang on into any ideas of how something should be. What is the righteous way of being? How you should meditate or not meditate? What things should look like or not look like? how you should be looking like and not looking like. Just stay in this place without an idea and maybe something valuable appears to you. Give yourself a chance to meet yourself. without any definition of what yourself is, how it should be, how it should react, how it should behave. Put all these ideas away and just hang out with your being, yourself. And then see what comes. Give it a try because that's something we don't do.
slowly, slowly come back. Come back here. Shift your attention from the inner world and shift it back into the other world. Slowly, slowly shift your attention. And do it consciously because it's very helpful instead of just automatically opening your eyes be aware that you are shifting your attention from the world of silence, from the world of stillness into the utter world. Okay. The number one thing I would like to share with you is in the center of yourself and in the center of the universe, it's very quiet and nothing is happening. Despite what you're seeing, what appears to be a chaos, ups and downs, and craziness, uncertainty, confusion, when you reach deep inside yourself and you bypass your thoughts, your mind, you bypass your emotions, it's all very quiet. It's very still and very quiet and nothing, it goes on. Nothing's happening. You recognize that when you get into a practice of meditation correctly, when you do your meditation correctly, when you recognize that and you go beyond the mind, then you see that everything is very calm and quiet. But when you come out of it and you come back into the world that appears to be real, things start to get crazy. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a couple of stories. I want you to understand this. Because sometimes it's, I discovered that sometimes sharing a personal story helps other people and they can relate to it. It was in, uh, so what, uh, the topic that I like to talk about is how to stay still. How you can stay in your stillness what is stillness? What does it mean to be still and not to get caught into the pendulum of life? The apparent world, the world that appears to be real, and we are in contact with it on every moment, a daily basis, is always in flux. It's always ups and downs. The nature of the human mind is that it wants to create some kind of stability and predictability. That I'm going to be doing this every day, the world is going to be doing this every day, and I'm going to figure out a way to manipulate things. How can I be still? What can I do? I mean, Number one is to recognize this, that this is really a time, what is happening right now is a golden opportunity. It's really 
it seems like it's a disaster. It's, there's the pandemic, there's the unrest, especially if you're living in the U.S. with all, all these demonstrations and unfortunate events that have happened recently. Um, but in some ways, this is not the uh, first time this is happening. And uh, the wor if you look at the uh, history of, of humanity, this sort of thing's been happening, maybe not to this extreme, which is happening right now, but there's always something's going to happen in the world. Whether it's a natural disaster or uh, it's a war uh, or something happened to your family or something happens to you financially or physically, the, the life that you're in contact with and you're living is not going to be a smooth ride all the time and things are not going to go your way. That's the nature of the world that appears to be real, this world. So this world that appears to be real, okay, including your body, including your mind, your feelings, it's always going to have ups and downs, ups and downs. It's never going to be steady. It's never going to be like it's going to go your way all the time and it's all going to be peaches and cream. There's always something going to happen, always, no matter what, and no matter who you are, no matter how big and strong you are, doesn't matter how wealthy you are, how you look like, what kind of race you come from, what country you live in, how safe you think you are, it doesn't matter, even if you move to the country and you have your farm, you have a uh, sort of living in a community that it sustains itself and it's all lovey-dovey and you have animals there and horses and you're farming and you're taking care of, uh, you're producing your own food and it's very quiet and it's very shanti-shanti and it's very peaceful. Still, something is going to happen that can rock your world and change your world and creates disturbances. And no matter where you go in the world, you still have to take your mind with you. So you can escape your mind, you can escape your emotions, and you can escape your body. So these three elements are going to go with you wherever you go. So we are in this false belief that we're trying to manipulate things continuously to go our way. And it's interesting because life keeps pulling the rock from under your feet. And no matter how good you had it, let's say you had it like this for 60 years, okay? For 60 years, everything was really going my way. And all of a sudden, this thing happens. All of a sudden, this pandemic happens, for example. And it doesn't recognize rich and poor. It doesn't recognize um, that, okay, for 60 years, you've been slick and you're smart and you're a great businessman and you've been an entrepreneur and you're doing really well or whatever, okay? And now all of a sudden you're in deep trouble. And you're about to lose everything in your in in you know, all your assets or whatever your lifestyle or this identity that you have about who you think you are, and all of a sudden it's being rocked. But this is you know in one extreme part of it. The other part of it is we see it every day, all the time. That all of out of nowhere you have it all right. You know, and you don't have to be 60 years old. Let's say you're 35 years old or whatever. And you're beautiful. You're healthy. You eat organic. You're vegan. You are, do meditation. You do yoga. You wear your mala. You're 
you pay your taxes, you're a good person, you help your community, you do all the, all the right things, and all of, out of nowhere, you're diagnosed with some kind of brain tumor, you're diagnosed with breast tumor, or whatever it is, and three months after you die, or you go through a complete series of surgeries and medications and this and that or whatever and what you thought was perfect suddenly in a very short period of time is destroyed so this is happening all the time it's nothing new with this pandemic and and if you live in the US with the riots and everything is happening. It's more in your face now. It's just kind of forces you to recognize this. And it's a situation that is trying to show you something. If you switch the way you look at things, okay? If you shift, if you take these glasses out and put these other glasses, and look at it like, what is this? It's really in my face. I can't escape it now. I'm forced to wear a mask wherever I go. I'm forced to deal with a lot of people that are in fear, worry, anxiety. I feel, I feel it, you know. I'm hearing sirens all the time. I'm, you know, people are dying. I get all these reports and da 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 The list keeps going on and on and on. I'm forced in isolation. I can't spend time with people I love or I don't, can't go to a gathering, I can't go to a party, I can't go eat out again comfortably. There is always a story or some limitations. So why is it happening? Why is it in your face so strongly? What's the message in it? And the conventional way of thinking is that you want to correct it and you want it to go back to normal and whatever it is. I just want it to go back to normal. But that's not about it going back to normal. It's, again, your focus is on the other world. You're looking at the world outside of yourself and you want to fix this world outside of yourself so it, it fits your style and your idea of how things should be. And it's not going to work. It never worked before, but not in this exaggerated or in this way that it has come. It's not going to work. I don't care what you do. It's not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work is because it's trying to do something and tell you something. It's for your spiritual growth. It's about awakening, to wake up. But what do we wake up to? If you've been on this spiritual path <clears throat> and for a while and you've been reading books, going to workshops, watching videos on YouTube from different teachers, or you, uh, you've been active in this. For years, you've been hearing that we're on a verge of an ascension to higher dimension. So let's say we're on the verge of the ascension to fifth dimension, to a fifth dimensional consciousness. Uh, humanity goes into this other level, it's on a leap to, to shift. So, but this leap, this shift of going to this other higher dimension, it's not going to be according to what you like. It's not going to be like you're going to be able to keep doing what you were doing before and you're also in an awakened state. If you're supposed to wake up from a dream and you're supposed to awaken 
to a higher consciousness, that means you have to let go or you're forced to let go of a style or a way of thinking or being that you were doing into a new way of being. So any effort to hang on to what was before and trying to force that is futile because it's not going to work. You're already in this shift to go to the next level. Is this making any sense to you? Do, do you grasp this? That for those who are spiritually advanced enough or they're ready and they're shifting, they're moving into this other place, this world, this idea of world that we've been living in is going to be destroyed. It's going to crumble. It's going to be gone. So if you're trying to hang on to what it used to be, you're just going to suffer. And it's going to destroy you. And it's going to get you really involved with what is happening in it. What is going on in the world? You're going to be involved with it. You're going to be watching all these videos and all these different uh, contradicting news that comes out, whether it's on pirate radios or alternative um, Facebook messages and all these different things we get, whether it's the uh, um, whatever the stories we're hearing, whichever direction you're attracted to, whether you are attracted to the... Uh, mainstream uh, news that you're getting or you're attracted to the uh, alternative news. It doesn't matter. It's an involvement with a world which is about to disappear. And you're trying to fix it. And also you're trying to make sense out of it. You're trying to figure out where is your position. Because it's going to get more confusing. It's going to look more helpless. It's going to be more chaotic as we go forward. Those of you who were with me five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, two years ago at the academy, uh, back in the day, if we go back to my old academy videos, which they're all on YouTube, you would hear me saying this. I used to share this with you, that this type of thing is going to come and it's going to happen. But I'm not talking about doom, doom and gloom. That's not where I'm referring to or striking fear at your heart. That's not what it's about. This is about awakening, to wake up, to wake up, from the dream you were into, the dream we were dreaming. And when you're dreaming, you're sleeping, imagine you're dreaming, you're in your home, and your home is in fire. It caught fire, and you're dreaming, and you're having this great dream, whatever it is. You're making love to this beautiful person in this dream, or you're walking on a beach hand in hand with your soulmate, but you're in a dream, and the house is burning. And your dad runs in home and is shaking you and is saying, wake up, wake up, and gets you out of, wants to wake you up because the roof of the house, your bedroom is going to fall on you and you're going to be burned and die. And you're like, leave me alone. I don't want to wake up. I'm in this beautiful dream. And your dad, your mom is shaking you and finally they're, they're waking you up. And it's disturbing because you're walking on a beach with your sweetheart. You're dreaming that you're with this twin flame of yours. And now someone wants to drag you out of it. And of course, you're resisting to it. And you're disturbed that they woke you up. But when you wake up and you realize smoke is everywhere, fire is everywhere, and they're dragging you out of the house to save your life, then 
you are appreciative of it and you're grateful. Otherwise, you would have been dead or you would have been badly burned. So, and the same thing is happening right now. The structures of the dream are about to fall apart. They are falling apart. And any attempt to hanging on to it is a waste of time. So, the best is to accelerate into this thing of, okay, all right, I want to wake up. You are waking up. But waking up to the truth of who you are. Not to what you were dreaming. Not to what you were thinking you were but to what you really are. And what are you? What is the truth of who you are? Have you ever questioned that? Have you ever asked that question yourself? Because we're so deeply conditioned to be in this dream and sleep. And then when existence, or as Papaji, my sad guru, used to say, the merciful guru appears in your dream through the grace of Her Majesty, Lord God, and wakes you up and fish you out of this nightmare and saves you to awaken to who you really are. And then you're freed. And the exact same thing is happening right now. Exactly same thing. It's really happening this time, big time, to this planet, to the inhabitants of this planet. That's what's happening. It's a wake-up call. It's a waking up. Waking up to the truth of who we are. That's what's going on. If you're in case wondering why it's happening. What's happening is directed under the straight order and supervision of Ishwara, Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, has decided on this. This is God's will. Not any, no one else, everybody else is a peon in this story, whomever you want to think about and talk about. Everybody else is a peon. Forget about it. They're nothing. There's nobody. They're all employees. They're all servants of the boss. This is God's will. I don't want to sound religion or corny, okay? Religious or corny and da 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 da. No, I'm just being straightforward of what's going on right now. What is happening right now? No one has any power, any force to do anything unless the Supreme Soul allows it to be. If the Supreme does not allow it to be, it cannot happen. As simple as that. And this is what's happening. We were talking about the ascension to fifth dimension. We we're talking about awakening the new Akorian era and the shift of the human consciousness. Yeah, but put this idea of the utopian planet Earth out of your mind because that's another implanted idea in your head that you're going to be living on a planet Earth that is all peaches and cream and it's all brotherly love and blah 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 and everything goes your way and everything is according to these pictures that you have forget about that one that's just a picture in your head. 
It's not about that type of shift. The one you're going to enter into, you cannot imagine it. It's an inner shift. The one you're thinking about is an utter shift. You're thinking about a utopian world that everything looks like these images or pictures you have seen. But it's still an utter world. It's a world outside of yourself. That's not the real thing. That one's still an imagination. Shift your attention from that one. That's not real. That's bullshit. That's another dream. This one is an in internal, internal revolution. It's a shift internally inside yourself. It has nothing to do with the world you're seeing outside of yourself. Is this making any sense? I hope you understand what I'm saying. I hope you grog, you grog this. I hope you get what I'm saying, or at least it clicks something. Any attempt to create an other world outside including your thoughts, your emotions, and your body of a utopian world is your waste of your time. It's not going to happen. And if it happens, it's going to be a short period of time, and then it's going to crumble again. Because it's not real. That's not the world you want to invest your time and energy on. You have to go inside and look for that world which is within yourself. And that's where the shift is. That's where it's changing. And invest in that one because that is the one that doesn't change. It's never going to come and it's never going to go. It's always here and it's always still. That's where you become free. And that's why the one you're seeing outside of yourself is going downhill. It's going to burn. It's going to be destroyed. It's because the house is burning. And you need to wake up and get pulled out of it to be saved out of it. Or you're going to get burned with it. So now, let's... Hi, Artie. Nice to see you. So, now, let's go to the topic that I mentioned to you. How do you deal with this? All right? How do you deal with this? What is stillness? How do you stay still? How do you stay in your center? How do you do that? What does this mean? is that the more you practice, the more you shift your attention, okay? And just pay attention to what I'm saying, please. Don't get distracted with anything. Don't write anything. Don't play with your pets. Don't go on your phone. Just pay attention for a minute, okay? Because I want you to get this, all right? I really want you to get it because this is going to help you if you get it. Your attention is on a false place. You're putting your attention on your thoughts, on your feelings, on your body, and on the world events. Right now, your attention is on the world events. Okay? So your attention is on the false place in the core of spiritual awakening. You have to take your attention of the world that you're seeing, you're sensing with all your five senses and everything, you have to take your attention off of it. 
you can't you can have to take your focus out of it i know it's crazy it's around you and your nervous system is involved with it mine too okay mine too my nervous system gets affected by it and i'll give you some examples so you don't make this projection on me that oh this guy is probably an iron man this is not true okay you have to take your attention from being involved with what is happening in the world and shift your attention towards inwards into this place inside yourself which is the observer is the one which is sitting here simply watching so you have shifted your attention to the watcher to the observer inside yourself instead so you're in this meditative place you bring your attention to this woman this man this thing this being inside you that is aware is totally aware of senses thoughts physical body and is aware of the world outside so you bring your attention to that one instead of keeping your attention on the world outside and when you bring your attention inwards to this place you recognize that this one this dude this buddha this being inside you is always just sitting here really chilled and it's just watching and it doesn't care what it sees or what happens is simply aware of them but it's not involved with them it's absolutely has no involvement with what is happening in the world or what kind of thoughts it hears or what it feels it's simply aware of them it doesn't judge them and doesn't have a preference it's not preferring this thought over that thought or this emotions over that emotion or this world event over that world event it's simply aware of it that's it and this part of you has always been doing this which is your higher self you need to look for this place inside yourself this is your ticket this is your safety this is your insurance policy this is how you can free yourself this is how you can get out that's where it's still so you bring your attention in that place you reconnect you bring your divert your attention and if you don't really understand what i'm saying okay it's foreign to you or you're just wondering like what is he talking about start doing a simple practice make this your priority that you practice number 1a implement in your daily practice daily you have to do it every day okay because you're so deeply conditioned to reaction that you react all the time to everything and the world events are made you a yo-yo you're a yo-yo right now you're up and down and up and down and up and down you hear all these bad news and you're freaked out and you're in anxiety and you're taking pills and this and that and drinking or whatever you have to do to calm yourself down then a little good news come and you relax and you have your glass of wine and oh, okay i can go outside on the side cafe and sit down and and you're happy then the next day you're getting this other news that this is going to happen so you're in the rut you're down up down up constantly according to what you hear from the outside 
So that's on the world level. In your relationship with people you're in, involved with, whether you're married, you're in a relationship, you have kids, whatever is your story, you're working, you go to the office, or you're working from home, and you have a boss, or you're the boss, or whatever it is, is in that in, in a rea in the reaction is that your people you're interacting trigger you. They tell you something you don't like, they insult you, or they're emotional, or they're freaking out, and then you react to them, and you freak out, and you go up and down, or you get angry, or you get upset, or you blow up, or that kind of a thing. So the practice you want to do is you want to tell yourself, you know what, today I'm not going to react to anything. So you start with one day, one day at a time. Make a conscious choice that today I'm not going to react to anything. So you go to your coffee shop, you're standing there in a line to get your coffee, and this lady's standing, have you heard the news? Do you know that there's going to be martial law, and the troops are coming right now, and the looters are coming right now? And you say, um, yeah, thank you, I appreciate it, yes, I have. And you don't react to it. You come home, and your partner is stress or whatever and runs to you and tells you um, why did you do this and you always mess things up and you never wash the dishes and you never put the cap of the toothpaste together and you always da 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 and you just look at it and you say thank you you don't react to it even though he's wrong or she's wrong and you always do things right, but they're just being an asshole, or they're not being fair. You just say, okay, thank you. You don't react. Stay in your center. Bring your attention back to the center, and just stay centered. I don't watch very much of the news, but... I can't help it. I hear things. Sometimes I'm curious. Those past few days I've been watching all these demonstrations and the looting and everything's been going on. Also, past few days, you know, we had helicopters over in this area. There's been gunshots or there's been tear gases shots or sirens constantly. Over, you know, today it quiet down finally after three days, but for three, four, nine stuff days, this was very intense going on. And of course, it affects your nervous system. You get, you get nervous. You, get, you start feeling anxiety. You feel like, okay, it's very intense. What do you do? If you can, go to the nature. Go for a walk by the ocean. Go for a drive in the nature. Go, go in the mountains. Just go, go somewhere uh, quiet, play some meditative music, and just relax and come back to your center, reconnect to your center, and you realize that God is here, the self is present, and all is well. Everything comes down and quiets down. Then you come back home and your best friend calls and you say, oh, have you heard that they just cut off everybody's, I don't know, um, checks or you're not going to get the money or blah, 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 or someone's freaking out and is telling you a story and you're hearing it and you say, thank you. But you don't get into the story. You don't get involved with them and telling, no, that's not true or this is how it is or that is bullshit, or that's a conspiracy. Do not get engaged with stories. Just hear it, say thank you, but don't react to anything. And make that your practice on not reacting to things. And you will see how quickly the quality of your well-being starts to change.
and how the people around you change too. But don't do this in a way of manipulating things to go your way because again you're back into this unconscious manipulation of creating a situation that things go your way. I'm not talking about that. That was the old way. That doesn't work. This is about you awakening to yourself. This is about you to find inner stillness because the inner stillness, the one inside you, the Atman, does not change. Hold on a second, please. One moment. The Atman does not change. So, the Watcher is always here. The Presence is always here. That which you are. You want to reconnect with the truth of who you are. Not what you think you are. And we're going to get into this thing too. And I'll help you with it. But first thing first, one step at a time, let's go forward. Let's learn how to be still. How to be the Buddha in the midst of the chaos. How you can stay centered and not react. Not go up and down and up and down. Otherwise, welcome to hell. Your life will be hell. Because you're trying to control the world of the event and what you see, this world, is in chaos. So you can't control it. But you can recognize who you are. And you can recognize your power. And you can recognize this part of you which is eternal and it's always here and it's untouched it cannot be touched and through that recognition of something which is real inside you something which always remains the same by recognizing that part what happens is you begin to see what you're perceiving is not real it's not real but it doesn't matter how many times I tell you that because you haven't recognized it for yourself because you're identified with what's changing. Until you recognize what doesn't change, you won't know what's changing is not real. You believe it is very real and it will scare the hell out of you. So... The purpose of everything we're doing here and everything I'm sharing with you from meditation to the teachings to the exercises is for you to recognize this part of yourself, the real you, which doesn't change and is not affected by anything that happens in the world and anything that goes on in your mind and you feel is never affected. It's always unaffected. It's always pure. It's always present. And it's blissed out because it is God. Because it is that. It is the self. The eternal self. And the whole thing which is happening is for us to recognize this part. To identify with the truth of who we are. And the more your attention goes into this place, which is still, the higher becomes your vibrations. You begin to vibrate because you're not identifying with the world. Your identification with the world has shifted. So you start to rise above it. As you rise above it, you start to see that this world, which is in flux, is not real is not real. 
because you're start, starting to recognize what is real. And that's where your consciousness starts to arise, expands to a higher dimension. That higher dimension is not this one, my dear. So, I'm going to give you a couple examples. Let me see how much time we got. Yeah, we're, we have half an hour. In 1992 or 3, I was, I went to the see Papaji Punjaji, my sat guru, and towards the end of this journey, after six months or whatever I was in India, I headed up to Nepal. I went to Kathmandu. I wanted to go and I wanted to do some hiking and tracking that everyone was talking about in uh, around Himalaya. And I went to Kathmandu. I was there for two, three days. So I'm wandering around and shopping, doing this. And, and I'm a backpacker. I'm a hippie boy uh, with my backpack. I'm on this self-awakening, self-inquiry journey. And now I'm really enjoying uh, tracking and backpacking. And... One day, I want to go from one area of Kathmandu to another area. And I thought, you know what? It's going to take too long to get to this part. So why don't I cut through the city and get, get to that area? So I'm just wandering around. I'm walking through. And what, what happened was, as I'm doing this, is i walking through this really tight, narrow street and as I'm walking through it, all of a sudden, I encountered this big mob. And or maybe the mob is not the good word, but there were these students, and they had these red flags, I think. Um, big demonstration. They were angry. They had clubs in their hands. They had rocks in the other hands. And uh, there were... So all of a sudden, I turn into this narrow alley in the middle of this uh, uh, residential area. And there were these nice tight little streets. And I turn around. And all of a sudden, this angry big group of mob is coming. So, And I turn around to go back. And all of a sudden, is another a group of the uh, b uh, police, all armed, and they're wearing their um, anti-demonstration um, clothes and everything with their bats in their hands and everything else. So all of a sudden, I find myself in between these two groups that are about to clash with one another. And I'm in the middle of it. And, of course, your nervous system, you, you freak out because you know you're going to get killed right now. These two angry, these two groups are about to clash with each other and they mean business. They're, they're not friendly. So, all of a sudden, intuitively, what I did was I went and sat down against the wall on a corner and sat in a lotus position and I... Just sat in meditation. Closed my eyes, sat down like a good boy, went into meditation. My attention went to the third eye. I went inwards and I connected to the self, which is very still. I went into stillness and I just stayed there. And I heard that the two groups started to clash with each other. I'm hearing yelling, screaming, all kinds of different things and beating and everything. And of course, the police started to push the mob backwards. And the 
eventually the whole commotion moved on. And after, I don't know how long it took, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I don't remember because in those moments, you know, it's timeless. You just go into this place because in some ways, you know, your life is over. You're going to get killed. Someone's going to beat something. Someone's going to hit you in your head with a, with a bat or, or a club or uh, a knife or rock or whatever, and you're going to die. So I'm just in this place, absolute silence, and very still, not reacting to anything is happening. I'm just like in total stillness. And the entire demonstration moved as if they never saw me, as if I didn't even exist, or they didn't care, or whatever. I was in silence. I was no threat to anyone. Nobody bothered. It was grace of God, whatever. I had no choice. There was nothing I could do. But one thing I could do is just to go back into the truth of who I am. And the whole thing moved away. As it moved away, and they were away five t uh, 10, 15 meter. And, you know, I opened my eyes. I saw that now the pathway is open. I got up and I started to walk away. And I saved my life. What I mean about stillness is that's one example. I'm going to give you another example. I went to visit a friend of mine yesterday. Because this area, there was a big demonstration. There was like helicopters all over flying for two, three days. And uh, noises, sirens, fire trucks, police, police vehicles, and constant si sirens and noise. I go see this friend of mine. I, uh, so in the midst of this craziness and everything is happening, I had my morning work appointments. So I finish up and... Is just crazy. And it's like, okay, I need to get out of this area. This is like too much, too intense, too much noise. It's been going on for three, four days nonstop. And I don't care what's going on. I need to just get out. So I use the back ways. I know my area to get out. And finally, I find my way to the freeway. And I go driving on PCH on the ocean towards uh, uh, P uh, Pacific Coast Highway. For those of you who have never lived in L.A., as you uh, drive uh, on this coastal uh, highway, which is beautiful, facing uh, parallel to the ocean. So I'm just driving for a while, go for a long drive, and my nervous system starts to quiet down and relax. I contact a friend of mine. I say, hey, what are you doing? You know, I, it's been crazy. I just want to get away. And I want to, if you're around, I'll come and see you. So I go see my friend. We're very good friends. And uh, we're just hanging out outside in the patio. And I can see, like, he's very aggressive. You know, I, any question I ask him, uh, he's answering me with aggression and anger and I'm just wondering what is going on and uh, and I tell him are you okay uh, because it seems like if I ask you some question you get very angry and uh, you you're rude and I don't know what's happening and he gets more agitated and gets more angry and starts throwing it back at me that, no, I am angry, and I'm agitated, and I'm rude. I'm just sitting there, really chilled, uh, in a patio. And uh, then, all of a sudden, he starts to blow up. And, uh, and he starts to bang on the table in front of me. And... Uh, I'm just waiting for him. Maybe he's going to strike me in my face. But I'm just sitting here, not reacting to any of it. And I'm just kind of looking at him. 
and he's yelling, starts yelling, getting angry, banging on the table, and getting close to me in a very aggressive way. But I'm not reacting. I'm not saying anything. I'm not arguing back with him or whatever. And, you know, it's kind of being insultive, like, or you only came here for yourself. I thought you came here for me, and you don't give a shit about me, and you just wanted to go somewhere and relax, and da 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 Just like garbage is coming out of his mind. It's the mind is blowing up, and I'm just checking him out. And after he's done saying everything he says, and I'm just sitting there looking at him, and then I give him a smile. Like, are you done? And then immediately he starts laughing and and he comes and high fives me and gives me a hug. And then business as usual. He says, Oh, you want me to make you some tea or you wanna you want a juice or can I get you some water or you want something to eat? I said, Yeah, why don't you give me a glass of water and come and sit down here. So we sit down and we start talking. And uh, we hang out together for an hour, an hour and a half, and, and I leave. Initially when this happened, when he starts get blowing up and just getting rude and being insulting, my first reaction was to just tell him, to fuck you, you know, or I don't appreciate or the way you're behaving. The, my first impulse is to get up and grab my things and walk away. But I didn't. I resisted my very first impulse. I just stayed there calm, quiet, collected in the center, and I looked at him. And I didn't respond. I didn't react to it. And I've had this happen to me many times in my lives, that this is what I'm speaking about being still. Stillness is not reacting. And this is a time in, in your spiritual development that unless you learn to be still, bringing your attention, and reconnecting with your own core and practice it on a daily basis. If you don't master that, this thing which is happening will tear you, tear, uh, tear you apart because you will be involved with the world which is in flux. So this is stillness. Stay in your center and practice not reacting. And you will see how your life starts to change. Now, if anybody would like have any any questions, please uh, put it on the chat box. I unmuted everybody and I took the option of you being able to unmute yourself because of this uh, fellow who was disrupting us. So if you have any questions, feel free either wave at me or uh, just write on the chat box you have a question and I unmute you and we can talk uh, with each other. I'll be happy to answer questions. Oh, okay, question. Okay. Hi, Sharon. Let me... Okay. Um, did your friend later apologize or indicate self-awareness or why he acted as he had? He did apologize later. So... Um, and we're cool. Let's relax. I, I understand the nature of the mind. I understand what is happening in the world. Uh, 
the pressure, the anxiety, the, the, uh, all the stuff is happening that is being sent out. And as a result of that, people get out of character and they react the way they react. But I can't control other people, but I can be aware of myself. So, um, so basically, this is what you want to do. Forget about what's going on in the world. Is how you react to what's going on in the world. Because the world that you are in touch with is an animation. It's a representative of your inner world. What's happening inside you is being projected outside. So, basically, you're looking for peace, so you have to find that inside yourself first. If you're trying to find it anywhere else, you're wasting your time. Okay, so, all right. All right, Miss Hilda, you have a question for me? Yeah, it is from Helen, my neighbor. She's okay, good hi. hi, Helen. Nice to see you, sweetheart. Uh, she is going to have a surgery next Wednesday because okay. she's got a breast tumor. Okay. So she, so she just asked what she can do to calm down. She's a bit, little bit nervous, you know. I understand. Well, you have been with me many times, so um, keep meditating and just know one thing. The most important thing that we need to know that th that which created this world, that which brought me and you to this world, that force, that intelligence that has created the platform for us to appear to this life is the one that is responsible for us. So just trust that, trust God, trust the self that you're going to be okay. It is natural that if you're going to go for a surgery for the nervous system, for the mind to worry. <laughs> and the worry is about what's gonna happen to me. Am I gonna be alive? Is something gonna happen to me? Am I gonna die? Am I gonna be What's going to happen to me? That's the nature of the mind because the mind wants some assurance that it's going to be fine. So just trust that existence, God, spirit will take care of you. And we are going to be with you. We will be praying for you. I will do a shamanic ritual and asking the 5D fifth dimensional angels of love and light to be with you during your surgery. So we're going to put a bubble of light and love around you and you're going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay, my dear sister. And there's nothing to worry about. You'll be okay. We love you and love will carry you through this experience. And you will come out of this greater, more awake, and more energized. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do we have... Hi, Shadi. Nice to see you. Are you working today? I don't know, somehow I can't unmute you. But good to see you.
Uh, hi, Ali. Welcome back. Ali Al. Uh, I don't know. Are you go by Ali or you go by uh, Shamari? Uh, uh, Al Shamari is my uh, it, it is my last name. But okay. I go with Ali. Right. Where Where do you live? I live in Norway. Oh, Norway. Okay. Where in Norway? Oslo. Okay. Where Where Gorde? <laughs> they go broad. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you back. Uh, it's nice to be back. Like I, this is my second meeting, and I'm, I'm just getting so much information about this. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to be uh, be at, uh, be at these meetings. Well, I'm 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 glad we're able to help you. So. Um, also, if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Zarathustra 5D, and then uh, there's also a lot of um, Academy webinar videos there, and there's a lot of gems in there. Or if you go on my website, uh, Zarathustra.tv, under the, um, there's a media section. So there's the podcast, and also a lot of the videos, previous videos, and different topics. So there's a lot of pointers there that if you have time or you're interested, you can you can take advantage of it. Yeah, I'm thanks for the recommendation. I'm gonna check it out later on. Yeah, yeah. Nice to see you. <laughs> you too, brother. Yeah. Hi, Malin. Is this your first time here with us? Hello, Sarchustra. Hi. 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 Have we we've met before? Yes, we have in Gothenburg, you know, in Sweden. Okay. You know, you got light behind your head, your your face, so I I I can't I can't really see your face, but there's okay. a lot of light. Yeah. So we try to change. Okay. Oh, hi. Okay. Hi. Now, oh, okay. Now I know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> no, no problem. So, well, good to see you. Yeah, the same to you. And I really appreciate these uh, webinars. I went, uh, I think, for a, a couple of weeks ago uh, okay. for a short period, but this is the one, the first one. Well, we're, we do it every Wednesday, so you're always welcome to join in. Yeah, I saw that. So I actually scheduled it in my calendar. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. And I would like to say that the, the theme that you have been discussing today regarding the inner peace, uh, I went, you know, on this uh, workshop that you had in Gothenburg, I think it was maybe one and a half, two years ago. Uh huh. And about two weeks from that time, after we had done this meditation, you know, I am. Okay. I just went into that stillness place that you talked about. It was really amazing to see how still you could be. And people told me when they looked at me, and they said, what have you done? You look so calm. It was mm. fantastic, actually. So, but it keeps uh, actually continuous work to stay there. Well, yeah, you remind yourself. Yeah. And you bring your attention back to your stillness. Yeah. So, because you have to understand that this is thousands of years of conditioning and a number of years of whatever age we are yeah. in this life that we've been conditioned to put our attention on something that we are not. So it takes time to rewrite the program and to um, recondition ourselves. So it's okay, you're on the right path. And the fact that you got a glimpse of it 
and you were able to be in that place, uh, it's a blessing. Now you know it exists inside you. Yeah, I know. When I've been yeah. there some sometimes uh, during these years, but uh, it always makes me cry because it's so beautiful. It's a, really a blissed feeling, as you say, when you go there. Yeah, beautiful. That's a good getting a glimpse of the truth of who we are. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Happy, happy to hear that. Nice seeing you. Yeah, yeah the same. So, um, check this out. <clears throat> We're going to have, uh, we set up the dates and God willing, if everything goes well and nothing happens to um, our internet service, we're going to have uh, an online global self-awakening workshop. And this is going to be, I'm going to give you the dates. Uh, I'm going to put it on my website very soon. Just one moment. Let me find the calendar here. Um, <clears throat> uno momento. And the dates are going to be, it's going to be June 18, 9, uh, 18, 19, 20th, and 21st. It's going to be the first week, and the second week is going to be 25th, 26th, 27th, and 28th of June. So eight days. It's going to be from 10, to 10 in the morning to 12 California time, uh, which is going to be from 7 p.m. to 9 o'clock uh, European time. Uh, so this is a free online global self-awakening workshop. And uh, I encourage you to join me and also um, pass the information to any, anyone you love and you feel like they can take advantage of it. So I want to give this as a gift to my brother sisters who've been supporting me for all this time and helping uh, a lot of people that those I know and those are going, I'm going to meet to give them and give you tools of how to deal with these times. Um, during that time, we will not have the academy. But I'm going to put this out. Check my website out, zaratustra.tv. All this information is going to be posted uh, in the next couple of days. So uh, we're going to have an eight-day workshop, two hours each day for four days in a row. So it's pretty much is going to be the same time of our academy, but it's going to be four days in a row. And then it's going to give us a chance to really get into the groove and creating the platform and building up the energy. So when we're doing this in these days in a row, really gives you a chance to really reconnect to, to the silence and the stillness, which is within yourself. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, those of you who participate on Zoom, you are in our system and uh, you get an email from, from us every week. When you do get an email from us about the next academy, uh, also we we'll send you a copy of the podcast and this broadcast. So you, uh, if you check the, uh, the academy um, email you have it there also i sent this week a, a gift to everybody it's a free meditation uh, that is available for you check it out uh, it's a good one uh, we also have created some new online products uh, we send that to you as well as um, I am taking a couple of students for my life for the life uh, training program. So I do have a couple 
space is available. If you're interested in the live training program, write me, write an email to me and we'll set up an appointment and we talk about it and I'll give you all the information you need. Our next academy is going to be next Wednesday. I look forward to seeing you. I send you a lot of love and light and stay safe and stay in your meditation and stay in your heart and reconnect with the center and remember who you are. You're not this little itty bitty thing that is helpless. You are Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul. You're powerful. I'm not talking about the egoic I. I'm talking about your presence. You come from land of love. You represent love in this, on this planet. That is what we do. And in order to do that, we have to remember who we are. And in order to remember who we are, we have to go beyond our thinking mind. So we reconnect with the truth of who we are. And through that, transformation takes place. I send you all a lot of love and light, a lot of blessings. All is well. Everything is fine. Stay in your heart and you'll be okay. Love you very much. Namaste.